The following video is brought to you in part by the amazing Patreon producers you see before you. If you'd like to show your support, you can do so at patreon.com slash 616 entertainment. Your support means the world to me, and I love you so much. Now let's get to it. We've all played brick breaking games before, right? You've got a paddle and a ball and a whole gang of rectangles that need to be smashed to bits in order for us to see the next level. Pretty simple concept. These games have been around for decades. But have you ever played a brick breaker with a story mode that takes you through a wormhole to another star system and search for a new home because Earth was near destruction after a third world war? I didn't think so. Hey Dan Dans, welcome to my review of Twin Breaker, a sacred symbols adventure. This is a title I've been looking forward to from the very moment it was announced, so I'm very excited to be sharing this video with you. Before we go any further though, I do want to state for the record that this review copy was provided to me by the developer, Lilymo Games. It's also worth noting that the game's writer and co-producer, Colin Moriarty, has been on my podcast, you've seen me wearing his company's shirts in my videos, yada yada. If you want to take my words with a grain of salt because I'm a fan of the guy and his work, that's your prerogative, but I assure you, my opinions are my own. Now let's get to it. Here's the deal. Just a few hundred years from current day, humans have mastered space travel. There are several cities worth of us living on the moon, and we're saving time and money pulling essential materials and minerals from the asteroid belt. In the US, we're living large and in charge, but the rest of the world are at each other's throats. Several countries have engaged in nuclear war, mass hysteria ensues, and in its refusal to participate in such foolish endeavors, the United States has become the planet's backbone. Peace is ultimately reached, but it's too late. Our planet is fucked. Watch your profanity. Right, I'm sorry. This is when our journeys to the stars go beyond our own solar system, and generation ships are constructed. Generation ships are spacecraft engineered to house hundreds of people for hundreds of years, as traveling a distance great enough to reach a new star system takes quite a while. Long story short, the generation ships all eventually lose contact with Earth for no discernible reason. Maybe they just went too far and lost signal. Maybe all the passengers died. Maybe the ships exploded. For more than a hundred years, we didn't know. That is until the very first ship ever launched popped back up on Earth scanners, sent a shitload of encrypted data back home before once again disappearing into the ether. Once decoded, the information sent back was revealed to contain the coordinates to a wormhole. A wormhole which we, as the player, are sent in to investigate. We take control of two brand new ships equipped with a weapon system called bouncer and we're off to the races. Did I happen to mention that this is all for a fucking brick breaker? Luckily, Twin Breaker isn't all sizzle and no steak. It would suck if we had this far out story accompanied by boring and monotonous gameplay, but fear not, as that's not the case. Twin Breaker drops us in easy, as the greetings and salutation ships act as our paddles on the bottom of the screen, using their bouncer weapon to destroy the blocks in our path. Level 10, there are 40 levels here, introduces our first boss fight. Levels 11 through 20 move the ships to the sides of the screen, which completely changes how we react to our surroundings. In a cutscene just before level 21, our heroes agree to launch their ship's built-in hologram system, which assists them in combat, and now we've got four ships on the screen at once. The ships on the sides of the screen are controlled with the y-axis of your stick, and the ships on the bottom of the screen are controlled with the x-axis. If this looks hectic and hard to keep up with, that's because it is. I had to completely rewire my brain to accommodate these new gameplay parameters, and it was not easy. I lost somewhere between 5 and 35 lives before I was truly in the groove, but it felt great. That's in contrast to Lilymo's first title, Perils of Baking, which also featured 40 levels, but the mechanics largely remained the same throughout the adventure and after the third or fourth balloon stage or cart ride, I was ready to move on. Clearing the screen of debris is the goal of every non-boss fight level, and our quest to do so can be aided by the power-ups hidden inside randomly assigned bricks. My favorite is the heavy ball, which blasts through whatever it touches regardless of how many strikes it should take to destroy. The fireball is just one step down, as it'll blow up any single brick it touches, but it won't continue forward the way heavy ball does. These hidden items aren't all power-ups though, as some of these sons of bitches will actually hinder your performance. You're going to want to avoid these inward arrows that shrink your ship and slow you down. The bugs that fly out actually do a great deal of damage to your overall score, so on and so forth. You never know what's going to emerge from the bricks, and watching the ball fly around the screen while also monitoring the items headed toward our spacecraft can be a tall order on later levels. 
Outside of story mode, which I'm not going to say anything else about is to not spoil the adventure, there are six other modes to spend time with. Marathon mode is exactly what it sounds like. Test your skills on an endless course. Pong mode, boom. Battle bosses level by level in increasingly difficult games of digital tennis. Random mode, forget about it. You've never seen these levels before, wise guy. Shooter mode straps our ships with guns to take on wave after wave of falling enemies. Catcher mode is simple. Get hit by the good shit, avoid the bad shit. Boss rush mode? Come on, you know where this is going. The point is this, there's a lot more bang for your buck here in comparison to your standard brick breaker. And I didn't even mention new game plus mode, which makes each of the 40 levels a little bit more difficult. Everything in twin breaker means something. The ship's names, greetings and salutations, comes from Colin's introduction to all of his videos and podcasts. Greetings and salutations, welcome back to Colin's Last Stand side quest. The characters, Chris and Colin, are the hosts of the PlayStation podcast Sacred Symbols. I can only say so much without ruining key points of the story, but those bricks that we're smashing out there, those are not just random pieces of matter that are scattered out in the black void of space. That wormhole we traveled into, maybe it already existed. Or maybe, just maybe, it was a door open for us from the other side. What the hell does that mean? Look, the point is this, nothing is here without purpose. There are story details and easter eggs around every corner just waiting to be discovered. If you think I'm kidding, go and get at least an A on every one of the 40 levels. Every single stage has an unlockable piece of story information connected to it, revealing more and more about how the world dealt with the situation at hand. Even in the trophy department, there's a method to the madness. Not only is this a super attainable, albeit challenging, double platinum trophy on PlayStation 4 and Vita, but take a look at the titles of the trophies. Notice anything odd? Welcome to paradise. Breaker is a game overflowing with passion. This much is obvious. For as much as I enjoyed Twin Breaker though, it wasn't a perfect experience. My grievances aren't monumental, but they're worth pointing out. Take a look at the graphics, right? Pretty cool looking. The bosses are dope. The Roman numerals on the bricks indicating how many hits are left on each one before it explodes is a nice touch. But what's going on with some of these backgrounds? I realize the background is the background. It's not the main focus of the set, but some of these are just fucking ugly. In game, you barely see it, as you're more focused on the ball and staying alive, but it's hard not to notice that they start to repeat after a short while. The game's soundtrack is cool, I pretty much like every song featured, but these also begin to repeat themselves a lot. And I mean a lot a lot. I eventually turn the volume off and just listen to podcasts while I work my way to the Platinum Trophy. The thing that stuck out to me most though was that Colin's character looks just like him. Chris Reagan's character, eh. The characters were actually redesigned after the reveal trailer dropped too, so maybe this was an internal conversation they had as well. I don't know. What I do know though is that I had an issue with the trophy that I'd earned not popping on my Vita. I reached out to Colin and Barry, the lead developer, to bring it to their attention and Barry responded almost instantly. He not only discovered the problem, but let me know what I had to do to fix it and even assured me that the issue would be patched out in the near future. So what started as a problem in that department was actually solved in record time by the man himself, which is extremely impressive. Barry gives a shit about his audience, this much is for certain. Twin Breaker is many things. It's a brick breaker. It's a story of interstellar travel. It's a lesson in the consequences to your actions. It's a shooter, a catcher, a ponger, a songer, a love letter to the fans of the Sacred Symbol podcast, and a very attainable set of platinum trophies for your PS4 and your Vita. At just $9.99 with cross-buy enabled, you can't go wrong. There you have it, Dan Dans. That's my review of Twin Breaker, A Sacred Symbols Adventure. If you want to take a break from 100-hour RPGs, or you want to put that fighting game, or that battle royale game, or whatever sports game you frequent on the shelf, Twin Breaker is a perfect pickup. Maybe you like to chase trophies. Maybe you're a high score guy. I don't know what the hell you do. What I do know is that I love you, and I will see you next time.